Are we done with an old school photo with the durry hanging out the mouth? Siggy's was on my list. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to The Deep Drop, the podcast that asks some questions about fishing and answers them. Well, I don't know, do we always answer them, Adam? Oh, well, yeah, I say we always answer them. To what capacity, we'll leave that up to the people listening, but we have, yeah, we give it a crack. We have a go. That's Adam Ring, <laughs> I'm Luke McCredden, and we're just going to dive straight into this episode without further ado. <laughs> How did the swim bait for cod craze start? This is probably one of the tougher questions that we're going to see on the deep drop, Luke, because I'm sure it has some part of history in Australia that I have no idea where it <laughs> come about. But the swim bait thing is not new, like on a global scale. It's not new, and it's also a very open-ended thing. So basically, slow rolling a paddle tail plastic can be classed as a swim bait. Mm. But where we've seen the massive explosion in Australia is that with Murray Cod. And they're generally these enormously big swim baits. They're heavy between four and six ounces. They need specific gear not so much to catch the fish, just to cast the lures. It's got nothing to do with getting an action on a lure. It's got nothing to do with anything but being able to cast the weight. As far as its conception in Australia, I don't know. Straight up, just going to be honest, Mm. I don't know. Mm. But I suspect it's got a lot to do with how much information and how much stuff we have access to via the internet. It's huge overseas. It's massive in in the American bass tournament scene and their general uh you know large mouth and small mouth bass fisheries and i think it's just ta- it's caught the curiosity of a few people and if you have a look at our murray cod they have some very close characteristics to the way american bass feed so it makes perfect sense and boy has it taken off massively oh, has it ever it's incredible it's one of the um only things i can recall as far as a a, a lure taking off we've seen lots of different lures and styles of lures taking off over the journey but this is one of the ones that stand out to me that the lure took off but then all of a sudden a new rod had to be developed for it as well (laughs) so so it was a bit of a double whammy in the old hip pocket if you know what i'm saying uh this this topic's an interesting one ads it's uh it's certainly one where i lean on you i think you've always been uh well versed in lures and product in general over me um so it's interesting to hear your thoughts on this but uh, I, yeah, I think you're right. I think there's certainly there's certainly elements of accessibility to information and product uh, from the states. Uh, I, I just think that's a huge one for sure. Um, where did the craze start? Well, it, it, it's it's usually like a lot of crazes start up. A pocket of people will have a go at something. Uh, it works, or there's a bit of fashion to it, and and I. I I talk about fishing being a fashion industry a lot, um, the tackle industry that is, and I know it sounds funny, um, but ultimately if something's popular and fashionable, it kicks on. Um, Whether or not it's useful to go fishing with or not, the swim baits for cod thing went nuts because it didn't just sort of happen and just sit there in the background. It was the forefront of every tackle store in Australia just about, or certainly on the eastern seaboard anyway, um, where it was you had to have, you know, x amount of this style of lure and at x price point and then the rods to suit and it became a craze across all media outlets all of a sudden magazines were filled with articles about this every tv show was doing special pieces on this because it was so popular why wouldn't you um and podcasts are talking about it right like right now like us um yeah but it's a fascinating one i can't help but think um you're right with the american market but i I also think there's probably something in the barra scene that might influence our cod fishing a little bit. I think there's probably people who are willing to try and trial new techniques and new ways on the barra 
across the board that something might have worked and we know there's a lot of crossover with anglers that do a lot of the the native fishing go up north do the barra fishing maybe there's something in that too someone's done a bit of swim bait action up on the on the barra and thought geez this could work in the in the fresh down south so there's that the the barra dams up north awonga mondrian they've been throwing swim baits forever yeah. like think of a slick rig right so just a, a pre-weighted pre-rigged soft plastic with a paddle tail it's mm. it's a swim bait you cast it to a weed line or an edge or a uh, stand up timber and you just slow wind it. it it's it's a swim bait but i guess our fisheries for cod in particular in victoria and in southern new south wales like copeton comes to mind mm. that that kind of feels like where it started but where the perfect storm happened is anglers also decided that there was no such thing as fishing too big. You take a 60 centimeter Murray cod, for example, the mouth is enormous. Mm. It's the same with a, with a barra. The mouths are huge on them. So all that you're throwing what used to be a big swim bait of a hundred mil. You're like, if you really sit back and compare that to what they're eating, it's probably pretty small. But our fisheries developed in Victoria. So look at Eildon, for example. The VFA have stocked it for a long time now. Those fish have grown to a metre, metre 20 plus. So they're a legitimate option to target a big fish over a metre. Whereas 10 years ago, the fish just simply weren't that big. Yeah. So it's been a developing fishery. There was the the craze of you could... You could never fish too big to the point where there's some lures hanging on tackle shop walls at the moment and flat out, I'll say it now, they're taking the piss. <laughs> like these things are almost my size. They look- <laughs> like it's insane. Now I'm, I'm nearly six foot four and it's, I'm behind. telling you, some of, some of these lures are just out of control. But it's, I think it's been a bit of a perfect storm uh, that it becomes sexy to fish big lures. Our fisheries developed to a point where there was fish that would actively hunt and eat those lures, mm. and we've also become in tune on when to throw those lures. It's not as simple as just throwing them any time of year. They definitely work in different times more than others, um, but we're still learning. It's a cool craze. It is because some of the lures are unbelievable. They are, and you're right about some of those, the size of some of those lures. They're like novelty lures. Uh, they are. So I guess how did the craze start? Well, I guess is it just based on a desire to, to find new ways? Yep, just evolution of recreational fishing and anglers being curious. Yep. And I think the that's the I've often said it, it's the best thing about fishing. Yeah. There are zero rules. There are zero rules. And there are some really good anglers out there that are trying different things. Yeah. And it's just gonna keep pushing the industry forward. <laughs> Are there things that are not acceptable in a fish photo? Gee, this, this could go anywhere, Ads. But I, 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 <laughs> should, I should, are there things that are not acceptable in a fish photo? Well, let's, let's be just real for a second. Firstly, obviously, anything illegal. So, you know, is not acceptable. Yeah, so, undersize true, true. or over bag limits or anything like that. So, yeah. let's get that out of the way. But we're talking legally okay but just optically unacceptable basically basically aren't we and god <laughs> we've seen them all over the years and and i think yeah. social media has been around a long time now so it's given everyone a chance to see all kinds of fish photos and hey as long as they're doing the right thing there's no there's no right or wrong this is just what what our thoughts are on the subject Opinions. matter ads and <laughs> And I'm going to start off, and I've got a bit of a list here, actually, because I was thinking about this today. But I'll just I'll just start off with a couple, and then throw to you for your thoughts on everything. But do you know one for me? And, and I hate, this is just a personal thing, by the way. Everyone's got different ideas. Blood, yeah. just blood, just just it's it's fish Not are going to fish are going to bleed. We get it. Some pelagics that bleed harder than others. Just just get a deck wash and hose that off for a quick snap, and then happy days. Just another one before I throw to you. Hands in the gills. Take your hands out of the gills. Yeah, especially when the angler is claiming the fish was released. Released. Oh, released <laughs> healthily and safely. Yeah, I've got half its gills stuck in on my fingernail. Like, uh, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. So that, I don't know, that's, a, that's a couple. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? That's just... Well, there, it's, the list could go on. Yeah. Could go on forever. And I've got a couple of controversial ones that I want to actually throw <laughs> to you before I give my opinion. Yeah, but okay. I'm going to kick it old school with the first one. 
Are we done with an old school photo with the durry hanging out the mouth? Siggy's was on my list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're I, done with that, aren't I, we? I don't get it. Look, and hey, mate, maybe you're a proud smoker. Maybe you're really you're representing the, the old uh, Winnie Blues. But, you know, for the photo, just, just put it out. Take it out of your mouth, champion. Yeah, that's right. Just pop it down for a second. Oh, mate. Uh, <laughs> the other... <laughs> The other one is probably a little bit more serious. What are your thoughts on something like a gummy shark, especially for those that have been taken home for a feed? And I'm all for that because they're one of the best eating fish we have down here. But in order to care for them, they need to be bled, which generally means cutting them behind the head Mm. and taking the guts out. I can't stand the... Photos of it. That's just my personal opinion. The thing that I don't quite get, and and you're right, and you got to do that, and you got to do it fairly quickly too to really get the best out of your, out of the meat, and and that's totally fine. The thing that I that frustrates me about it is there is a point in time when you haven't made that cut across the back of the head, or you haven't gutted the fish. Just just take a second before you do all that. If you, if you want a photo of it, that is, especially a you know a nice one that you can show the kids or the family. Say, hey, check this out holding it up, you know, the big angled one, showing the length of a gummy. The ones with the, the head, yeah, nah, I just, I, I struggle with that. Yeah, it's it's a weird, it, yeah, it's a weird one. I'd prefer, I'm, I'd prefer a photo of the of the piece, of the fillet of flake on its own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I, I think I've mentioned this in a previous episode, but I'm huge on optics, and yeah. I think only because unfortunately in the industry that we're in, and I'm talking about recreational fishing, not from a, what we do for work point of view. It is funny times. There's a few out there that don't like recreational fishing and I'm sure there's a few more out there that would love nothing more than to find that little bit of something on the internet to start taking fishing areas away. We need to be mindful of that. It's just the day and age that we, we live in, whether you think or it's right or wrong. I think optics are a big part of it. And which leads me to the next one, Luke, and I want to ask mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. should we be done with the photos of, say, King George Whiting stacked up high on a bait board? <laughs> because, I, like, I get it. And the ones that I see, there's, there's, they have done nothing illegal. They are not overbagged. But say they've got two anglers on board. Mm. There's essentially 40 King George Whiting. Yeah piled up on a bait board it doesn't matter how nicely you arrange them yeah is it is it something we need to be we need to be putting up all over social media this is another one that that um, lends itself to to backlash isn't it you know because it it doesn't matter if it's the if you're under the bag or right on the bag and doing it all legally it's just optically it's it doesn't look great And, and i don't See the need for it. I think what it comes down to, and there's two, there's probably two types of photos here. It's it's promotional, which is I think, which is what I call a, a stack of pile of fish on a bait board or a cleaning table or something, and then a quality f- photo of a fish or the fish that you've caught or or a, you know a couple of nice close ups of fish that you caught. I think there's two very different things here. I think we're talking about people who love to make sure that they let everyone know how many fish they've caught and it doesn't matter what it looks like in a photo. And then there's people who want to take that couple of minutes extra to say, to, to re- get a nice photo of a fish or a couple of fish or whatever it is. Um, I think I, I don't love those stacked up fish photos, mate. And I don't know whether it's just a... And this all is just personal. So whatever, this yeah, is just oh, our yeah. opinion. So don't... And I just, I just thought of another cracker. Yeah. Right then. Okay. Just, like, it, just, it just came to me. Yeah. Now, we know the person that made this photo style yeah. famous. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> is it acceptable to take a photo with a fish with you staring at it like you're going to make out with it? <laughs> this is great. Is that I legal? I... I... Find those photos so funny. What are they Awkward. doing? What are they doing? <laughs> Making eye contact like that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's yeah, it's disturbing. Oh, it's, it's a magazine <laughs> shot. There was it was a magazine craze for a while where the writers were submitting photos where they were stargate, you know, staring into the eyes of these fish like there was something a bit romantic about. Oh, there that was happened. something romantic. Exactly. <laughs> like I get the whole fishing thing, but you know. Hey, what on. about what about you know? We've spoken about. Um, 
blood and you spoke about the, the gummy sharks, but so guts hanging out is never a good yeah, look. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's but but no good. But you could take this two ways. Fish guts hanging out, no good. But fellas, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come, yeah. on. Come on. Legal. Come on. Come on. Especially if you've got a durry hanging out of your mouth as well. <laughs> Bintang singlet. Oh, mate. Yeah, well, you know, if you if you're going all out, why not have a stuff? Yeah, in why, not? <laughs> yeah. why not? Yeah, uh, this is look. This is a perfect one to throw over to the listeners. Jump on, perfect. Jump on to uh, Instagram and and let us know. Better yet, <laughs> send us show us. Oh, actually, that's probably dangerous to uh, that's But within reason, show us what's unacceptable. I don't want to see fish with heads cut off. No, no, no. Pieces, yeah. But- Maybe. This is a really interesting one because everyone's got their own opinions and everyone's yeah. got their own reasons for taking certain photos. I'd love, I'd love to hear everyone's feedback on I this one because I think the list could go on forever. I love that so much. Head over to Instagram, find the deep drop, and and send us your send us your send us your photos of your mate who love a ciggy, and we'll, and we'll throw yeah. it up in our stories. <laughs> and he's and, out. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> But uh, that's very good. So yeah, look, or maybe, but, or maybe even your best romantic. Oh, yeah. You know, gaze. <laughs> Gazing into the eyes of an estuary perch. <laughs> Are we done with tournament style fishing shirts? This might get me into trouble, Luke. <laughs> this, this question. Yeah, both. You and I both. So. You and I have a history of working in tackle shop. Yes. And we saw the unbelievable rise of the tournament style supplemented fishing shirt. Yeah. Unfortunately, we haven't seen the <laughs> glorious fall of it. Because, like, oh. all right, let me try and not be rude. <laughs> no, this is just I, your opinion, mate. You can say yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, no, like, I don't, I don't. I don't particularly like them, no. but I understand from the point of view of advertising, it's great. Totally. So for those that for, so for those that are actually fishing a tournament, go your hardest. But <laughs> if you're sitting on the pier with the kids, <laughs> actually, I'm just going to throw this out there. You know what? At the date of recording this podcast, yeah, we're in October, 2022. Yep. I saw my dad put a photo on social media of a recent fishing trip and he was wearing one of these shirts and it was tucked in. <laughs> That's next level. How did that make you feel? I couldn't, I couldn't hit unfriend quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> but Look, he was proud as punch with his fish and, and his tournament shirt. And they are. People are and, and good on them. Um, I'm over them. I think I'm over them. They look a bit much Listen, now. We've all we've all worn them for various reasons. Yeah, we have. Yeah, well, of course we have. And look, I think it's one of those things too that if you're into cars, quite often you'll see car enthusiasts wearing a Ford or a Holden Polo shirt, right? Um, and and quite often they're it's that's very that's a they're very one sided on what they prefer, and they might love a Ford or a Holden. What, what I don't get most of these shirts that that we see now are splashed with. Branding, like that's a branding exercise from um yeah from right. our from our local brands, whether it be Rapala, Shimano, Daiwa, whatever it may be. But 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 the the angler that's wearing them is completely dis- disassociated with that, and in fact might not even have any gear of that uh, particular brand, which is fine. That's I'm just putting it out there that this is why it slightly confuses me. Uh, great marketing um, technique from said brands. Yep. Uh, I don't know, mate. I just think it's what like. Why is it something that anglers pride themselves in having as a like, as in clothing in general? I'm talking about here, like the set fishing clothes. Like, like I'll throw to you. Like, what what's your go to fishing? Out? Like, what's an outfit look like for you when you go fishing? Board shorts and a like a SunSmart like UPF fifty plus shirt. material shirt, yeah. which there's, which is I guess something fairly newish to the market but they just look like a normal long sleeve yeah. shirt some of them have a neck gaiter actually stitched into the okay. like into the i guess neck pocket oh so you're a proper wanker <laughs> proper one yeah I'm, no actually i'm a closet wanker because it's essentially 
I'm going to have to exit this podcast. <laughs> I've just had an epiphany. <laughs> what? I'm a new school tournament shirt wanker. Oh, no. It's basically a tournament shirt with no branding on it. It's a new age tournament shirt. Fuck. Yeah. Wow. This is it. This is interesting, and this is where I need is... to stop. I need to stop talking quickly. No, but this is the question: Are we done with tourna- tournament style shirts? Well, well, it's not a tournament shirt. It doesn't have all the loud colours and no. But maybe the answer is all over it. Yes, we're done with tournament style fishing shirts, but we've moved on. Old. We've moved on to new wanker shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's that? what? Well, what classes is not a wanker shirt? Well, what happened? Big tank to... singlet. Ah, that's bogan shit. <laughs> what happens to? <laughs> is there a such thing as cool fishing clothes? Because you no. don't want to wear something gee, nice. Gee, that's a... it's going to get filthy. I mean, that's a, that's a question all on its own. Is there such a thing as cool, as cool as good fishing clothes? Yeah, I don't know if there is. I just don't know. So if I there think is. we've answered it. We're all wankers. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's the answer. But, you know, tournament shirt wearers keep wearing them. Just embrace it, basically. Yep, tuck them in. Tuck them in. Wear them. Get them. <laughs> get them two or three sizes too small, and then tuck them in. Yeah, nice. <laughs> They're for the gym junkie wankers. We've seen. We've seen that. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, look, don't you know? Don't hate us. Like, let us know what we're missing out on. Maybe this is a, that. You know what? Post a photo of you in your tournament shirt. You know what? I'm going to go and get one. If if I see photos from people that listen to this podcast, yeah, on our Instagram page, yeah, send them with their through. tournament shirt on, yep, then I'll match it. Oh, that's magnificent! There's a challenge, All in, right? In not only not only in my new school one, yeah, I'll even go and buy an old school one, something outrageous. I love it. That's oh no, maybe not outrageous. But I'll buy an old school tournament style shirt. I love it. It I might th- even be too small. I think that's um, yeah. You have to get it too small. <laughs> I think that's a great way to end it, end the episode with the challenge. So people challenge, out there, yep. get on the deep drop Instagram page. Send us through your pictures, and ads will uh, match it. He'll get out there, and he'll we'll post some pictures of Adam in his new <laughs> his, his new old school <laughs> tournament shirts. I'm saying. Anyway, that's good. Leave it at that, and that is a good challenge. I can't wait to see the results of that one. Hey, everyone, thanks so much for listening. This is the Deep Drop. This is a lot of fun. We have lots of fun, but remember, it's just us having a bit of fun with our own opinions, but we love to hear your opinions. So the best thing to do is get involved on Instagram, and uh, each episode you'll see the topics that we're talking about as they come up on their posts. So feel free to jump on and, and leave your thoughts. And don't worry if you've listened to this down the track. Go back. Backtrack through the Instagram posts. Give us your thoughts. We love it all, and we'll... I think we're eventually going to have to do ads a couple of special episodes um, talking about some of the great uh, feedback we're getting on this show so far because we love it. We love it. So anyway. Yeah, it's it's good fun. And a big shout out to our special guest for reading the questions tonight, Nikki Duckstein. Nikki's a leader for the Worth Network for the Victorian Fisheries Authority. So thank you very much for that, Nikki. And don't forget to tell your friends, a deep drop podcast, subscribe, Get all the latest episodes as they drop and we'll uh, you'll hear from us. You'll hear from us real soon in another episode.